Joining us now is Peter Lerner, a spokesman for the Israel Defense Forces. Thanks so much for joining us. What information does the Israeli military have about this possible imminent attack from Iran? Well, we received the information from our allies, from our colleagues in the U.S. Um, we're following the situation currently. We have no indication that something is actually heading our way. Uh, but, of course, there is a, a, a possibility that that will happen. So we are prepared for any eventuality, for any scenario. Uh, our forces, our aerial defenses on, are on high, high alert in the case that something does head our way from Iran. And, of course, we need, we need to be very, very, um, I think, accurate and, and uh, cautious. And that's precisely why uh, the IDF has issued um, re renewed home front command instructions to the people of Israel, limiting the amount of people that gather at one place at any at any time. Um, so we're taking it seriously, but uh, we are confident that we can defend ourselves. We will, of course, be in deep coordination with our American friends um, uh, in order to, you know, try and field off any attacks that have uh, that can originate from Iran. Uh, this isn't the first time that has happened, um, and so we understand the types of threats that we face. Um, but, you know, the situation is uh, remains that we are focused currently on pushing Hezbollah back in, in Lebanon uh, in order to restore safety and security to Israel. That's what the civilians that have been living out of their home now for a year deserve. Right. I want to talk to you more about that, but just given this potential imminent threat from Iran and our reporting is it could be a ballistic missile attack. As our reporters described it, these are missiles that can go from launch to impact in about 12 minutes from Iran into Israel. So they are faster and they have more firepower than maybe some of those missiles deployed in the last time we saw a, a direct attack from Iran into Israel back in April. How soon could this come? And are you all maneuvering differently now with this news? So last April, uh, it was indeed a similar scenario, indeed ballistic missiles cruise missiles and drones, and each of them have their own flight time from Iran to, to Israel. Uh, indeed, 12 minutes is a short time, but long enough for our aerial defense systems both to identify and intercept, and that's how we were successful in April. And we, we are holding a very, very high level of readiness and preparedness to confront anything that, that, could, that could come our way. I think that, um, you know, this is not... Uh, something new, but we do need to be vigilant. We need to be prepared. And I think most importantly is we need to be able to keep our civilians here in Israel safe and secure and aware of how quick things can change from one minute to another from a security perspective. A key justification for the IDF incursion into Lebanon has been to make northern Israel safe for Israelis to return home, as you've described. Does the prospect of an Iranian attack complicate that goal in Lebanon? I think we revealed today uh, extensive footage of what we've revealed from the Lebanese side of the border, the staging grounds, the weapons uh, caches, um, the, 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 the plans themselves to infiltrate into Israel. So all of that considered, we have no choice but to make sure that Hezbollah do not uh, reside and loom over us from the northern border. And that is why the government instructed the IDF to go on the offensive after a year almost of negotiations of trying to come to a, a negotiated agreement that would get Hezbollah out of this area. Unfortunately, it did not succeed, and that's why we are currently moving forward. So, yes, of course, there is complications. And when we see Iran getting involved, uh, it, it reminds me, I think, of the 8th of October last year when Hezbollah decided to get involved. I think there's a lot to be ver lost, and I would say to Iran, look very cautiously and carefully of how we decapitated Hezbollah um, in the last week, taking out their senior commanders, their operational commanders, their strategic assets, uh, on vast majority of those. Look at very closely of how we've dealt with Hamas. On the other hand, um, nobody has an interest to further escalate this, the situation in the region. We just want our people to be able to go back home and live in safety and security. That can be delivered. Hezbollah needs to retreat. Um, in accordance to those agreements of the United Nations Security Council resolution, back to the Litani. We are currently operating in the border area, in targeted, precise, and limited in location areas, uh, in precisely to deliver that. So I'd say we would operate on one hand 
to defend our skies from any potential Iranian threat, but absolutely push forward to make sure that um, Hezbollah cannot launch direct attacks, cannot breach the, the border area, and perhaps try and conduct a, uh, an infiltration or an invasion into Israel, because from the plans that we found, and also from what they broadcasted over the years, that is clearly what they were planning to do, to breach the border, storm into the border with their Radwan forces, which are their special forces, come into our communities, abduct, kill, mass massacre uh, in the northern, the kibbutzim, the communities, the towns. And that, from our perspective, of course, is unacceptable. And also in the aftermath of October 7th uh, and the Hamas attack in the south, it is a very, very sore spot, and, and Israel just can't tolerate the, even the con concept that a Hamas or Hezbollah or anybody on any of our borders will pose such a threat ever again. So coming back to this potential threat from Iran and this development we're learning of this morning here in the U.S., uh, I'm thinking about what we heard from Benjamin Netanyahu, the prime minister of Israel, last week at the U.N., where he made a direct statement toward Tehran saying, if you strike us, we will strike you. That is a quote. What is Israel prepared to do in response if Iran launches this ballistic missile strike? Well, I'm not going to hypothesize about what we can do. Of course, uh, if we want a glimpse into our capabilities, our operational capabilities, uh, we flew our uh, fighter jets all the way to Yemen, uh, 1,200 miles away from Israel. Uh, is, is, Iran and Tehran are, are within our reach, if needs be, and I think the Prime Minister's words were, were very clear. Um, Iran should not mess with us. We have shown that we have the abilities, the capabilities, and that we have the resolve to defend the people of Israel. So as this operation is underway in Lebanon, how long do you anticipate that operation will last? You called it limited, localized, and targeted. I think that uh, the priority is to make sure that the conditions so that Israelis can get home um, is is reached. I think that, that is the primary goal. That is the cause, and that is what the government instructed us to do. Um, we need to make sure that the situation is safe enough for them to come back. So I would say there's definitely, and, and what we've seen today, the amount and the extent of their infrastructure that they had built over the last 20 years to conduct those infiltrations, to conduct those direct rocket attacks, uh, anti-tank guided missile attacks, uh, drone attacks, these types of things, they need to be gone. And I think that um, what I can say, and I'm confident that uh, uh, the delivery of our security can be delivered, uh, I think we need to be patient. It won't be done and by dinner. I think there's an understanding that if a terrorist organization that has built under the nose and the watchful eye, perhaps being ignored by UNIFIL, the United Nations peacekeeping mission that is sub, uh, located in southern uh, Lebanon um, for so many years, it's not going to be over quick. Uh, we need to make sure that this is no longer a threat. The UN, in fact, called this and said any crossing into Lebanon would be a violation of Lebanese sovereignty. What do you say to that? Well, since the 8th of October, uh, Hezbollah has been launching daily rocket attacks, missile attacks, drone attacks. In the first month of the war, in October and November, there were seven attempts to infiltrate our border, just like on October 7th. So I would say with respect to the United Nations, um, we have been waiting for a diplomatic solution for a year now. That diplomatic solution has not been uh, uh, reached up until now. And so the government um, charged the IDF to re restore safety and security to the north, to make sure that there are conditions that Israelis can go home. And I, and I would basically and fundamentally say, you wouldn't like it if you had to be evacuated from your house for security reasons, for from an imminent uh, terrorist threat. You would not like it even more if it took a year to try and resolve. And you would, like any decent human being, demand from the government to restore safety and security for me, for my family, and for every, everyone. And so I would say, yes, there is um, uh, operations that are ongoing. We've been conducting covert operations, as we revealed earlier today here in Israel, of the extent of what we found of the staging grounds, of the plans, of the munitions, the weapons, the a vast amount of tools of terror and death. That is all they wanted to do. And all of this uh, would have made what happened on the 7th of October look pale.
And so that's a, an unbearable reality, unfathomable from in any aspect, aspect of um, human uh, existence, and a reality that Israel just can't accept.